It's a very good afternoon, uh, members of the press, those of you joining us online. Uh, it's a warm welcome to our election watch update, uh, which we are bringing to you in conjunction with our elections directorate. Now, it's seven days to election day. Election day is on the 23rd of August, which is next Wednesday. At the start of this year, President Chamisa was very clear. He said that this is our year to secure a citizen's victory for change. And you all have noted that President Chamisa has been on a marathon uh, tour throughout the nation in all provinces, uh, and he's mounted an unprecedented uh, campaign, which is obviously focused on our rural communities, uh, which we are mobilizing. But at the same time, urban rallies and urban, urban mobilization has also been taking place. Uh, you will note that by the end of this week, President Chamisa uh, and our national campaign teams in conjunction would have addressed millions of supporters, uh, including all 36,000 villages uh, throughout the country. Now, as far as we're concerned, the rural vote is the game changer. Uh, for all these years, we've been told a myth by Zanu Pierre that rural communities are their strongholds. That myth has finally been busted by the overwhelming uh, support we've received in these communities. And despite the odds, the odds are very many, you've seen all of them, the political violence, the murder of our supporters, and you've seen the burning of Triple C members' homes, uh, the removal of our posters, the petrol bombing of our uh, billboards. You've also seen um, a number of our citizens uh, being intimidated and harassed. Citizens remain defiant. People are ready and mobilized for change. And if the temperature and the tempo on the ground are anything to go by, all indicators point to the defeat of ZANU-PF in the coming election. Now, as has been the case for several months now, we are keenly watching the electoral playing field, and we want to state that in this election, more than any other, citizens are at the center. And despite a tilted playing field, citizens, first and foremost, must turn out in their masses on voting day so that we ensure that our vote is too big to rig. It's imperative for citizens to defend the vote after voting in a massive way. Now, you have all noted yesterday that uh, Mr. Nick Mangwana was in sixes and sevens trying to sell a lie uh, that it's illegal to defend the vote. In fact, it's a constitutional imperative, an obligation upon everyone, citizens and state institutions alike, to ensure that this vote is transparent and verifiable. We have an obligation as citizens to ensure that the election meets the credibility test, that it's free and that it's fair and meets and holds up to the constitutional standards. And so uh, it's a matter of record that we're mobilizing polling agents, but their task does not end there. As citizens, we have to stand guard after the vote has been uh, cast, maintaining peace and order of course, observing our 300 meters rule and ensuring that until the V11 is posted on the polling station, we don't go home. Every citizen, as I said, is allowed by the Constitution to verify the count and to ensure and satisfy themselves that the vote is free, fair, credible, and verifiable. In this sense, citizens must be the primary observers of the election and safeguard it jealously. It's worth making a small note on polling agents. Uh, as the triple C, we're on course to having all our polling agents accredited by uh, the date that's been set at law, which is the 20th of August. And we're very thankful for the support and assistance of citizens through various initiatives to defend the people's vote, including the adoption of polling stations. As you can see, all the ingredients required for a citizen's victory are there. There's been mass registration, everyone is mobilized, and now we must ensure that there is mass voting and mass defense of the vote. On the 23rd of August, it's important that nobody is left behind. This is an election for everyone. 
A word on the consolidated voters' role. Our lawyers are actually before the High Court at the moment where they sought audience uh, with the High Court judge who had deemed the matter not to be urgent. It's our position as the Triple C that no other case could be more urgent than this. We are uh, now less than seven days to election day and we don't have the updated voters' role consolidated, the one with all the polling stations that were gazetted, and it's necessary for us to have that so that every citizen is clear as to which polling station they're going to vote at and so that we can also uh, come through that um, voters' role and make sure that it's searchable and analyzable and that there are no gross irregularities such as uh, would impinge the transparency, credibility, and verifiability uh, of the election. I turn now to the printing of the ballot paper. Section 52A of the Electoral Act is very clear. All political parties, including the Triple C, were supposed to have been informed about where and by whom the ballot paper was being printed, including the number of the ballot papers that were printed. Uh, unfortunately, ZEC has conducted itself illegally in failing to comply with that provision of the electoral law. As far as we're concerned, uh, this is a material breach of the electoral law and something that uh, cannot be acceptable. ZEC is a state institution and an administrative body have an obligation to act lawfully, reasonably, and fairly under Section 68 of the Constitution. Uh, that's something that we've taken up. I'm, I'm going to speak to it in a minute. Uh, before I do so, it's important to make a note about the postal vote. Uh, our incident tracker has been awash with reports from prison officers, police officers, other security forces saying we're being forced to vote under the direction and supervision of our seniors. Such a command vote is obviously unconstitutional. Everybody knows that under our electoral law, your vote is your secret. So you can't have your superior standing over you to check whether or not you voted for a triple C. We all know that uh, Mr. Mnangag was on record saying that the prison officers and other security forces have our voters really nice. Uh, obviously, we've done our bit to ensure that they're mobilized for change, but at the end of the day, they're citizens and they're entitled to have their uh, constitutionally enshrined right to vote uh, per Section 67 protected. They're entitled to secrecy. Uh, of that vote. And so throughout the course of this morning, uh, our electoral, electoral elections directorate led by uh, Councillor Ian Makone and Ms. Ellen Shiriedenga went to police general headquarters and also to ZEC to raise the alarm uh, on that postal vote. It's obviously unlawful, especially in circumstances where Section 52A of the electoral law has not been complied with. All of that uh, points to a material breach again of the electoral law. For the avoidance of doubt, we condemn command voting uh, and the lack of transparency of the postal voting process. What do they have to hide? Why should it be done under a cloud of secrecy? Why should it be done in a manner where police officers, prison officers, and other armed forces are being monitored to make sure that they vote the right way? Uh, we are obviously monitoring that situation very clearly, and that's something that uh, Ms. Julia Ling is going to speak to in a moment. A quick word on political violence. Political violence is outlawed by the literal law, by the Constitution. As a triple C, when we signed the peace pledge, it was our commitment to say, we don't need violence and coercion to get support. The masses love us. The masses love our movement. We have no problem with a festival of ideas. We, we can beat ZANU-PF when it comes to selling our policy plan, our proposal. We've just launched a detailed manifesto which sets out our plan for progress. So we don't need to be beating people up. We don't need to be ripping apart their posters. We don't need to be petrol bombing their uh, billboards. We don't need to be beating up their supporters. We don't need to murder them. We just want elections and not war. It's most unfortunate that our counterparts on appear are bent on uh, unleashing violence in our communities. And in response to that, we've set up rapid response teams to ensure that communities are safe 
and communities are protected. Our lawyers and our wealthy team are on standby to ensure that citizens are safe throughout this period. We're also keeping a tracker of all the incidents of violence. In fact, our elections directorate is in the process of compiling a, a dossier uh, that's going to be given to the static observer mission and all the other observer missions in the country so that they've got a, a sense of the extent to which ZANU-PF uh, you know, conducts itself violently when it's staring defeat in the face and when its back is against the wall. And we'll ensure that that dossier is made uh, available even to members of the press. On that note, yesterday we had a very worrying incident where 40 <coughs> of our members were unlawfully arrested. They had applied to conduct a rally uh, at Churu Farm. And when they were on the way to Churu Farm mobilizing, going through Machipisa, uh, the police ambushed them, hijacked them, and unlawfully uh, conducted a dragnet arrest, resulting in the arrest of um, Mr. Hakata, who's standing in Glebe, who's our candidate there, as well as a number of other, at least 39 other Triple C members. Our lawyers were immediately deployed uh, to the scene and are obviously uh, mounting a, a bid for their release. But in campaign season, especially in Glenview, where we see ZANU PF uh, conducting its own campaign activities every single day without interference, we expect that the playing field, in as far as campaigning is concerned, to be free and fair. We don't expect ZANU PF to abuse state institutions to stop our members for campaigning. So we continue to demand the immediate release of Mr. Hakata and the Machipisa 39. They should not spend more than uh, another moment uh, under police detention. They committed no crime. As we said when they murdered Tinashe Chitsunge, it's not a crime to wear a yellow shirt. It's not a crime to be a member of the Triple C, and so we continue to demand their re release. Like I said earlier, we say to Zalapiev, what are you afraid of? Why can't we just have a peaceful campaign? If your ideas win, fine. But if ours do, you do have a, a constitutional obligation to respect the will of the people. Now, um, I just want to close off my section by saying this. In the days ahead, we're going to ask the citizens to do the following. Firstly, check your polling station so that you know where you're supposed to be voting on voting day. How do you do this? There's a chatbot that was created by the citizens which will enable every citizen to know their candidate, especially where they're fraudulent fakes, especially the so-called double candidates. Uh, the chatbot is very simple to use. It's available in English, in Shona and Devele. All you need to do is WhatsApp, hello, moro, sabona, uh, to the number that's provided, it's plus one three zero five seven nine one triple zero two, and you just follow the prompts. It's very easy to use. You'll get to know which polling station you fall under, where you're supposed to go to uh, next Wednesday, and which is the legitimate candidate uh, that you're to vote for on behalf of the triple C. We encourage everybody to get there early. Most of all, most important of all, encourage all your friends, your family, your work colleagues, your church mates, your neighbors, everybody you know. Voting works. And like I said at the start, we have to ensure that it's too big to rig. The citizens that we've spoken to across the length and breadth of Zimbabwe continue to refuse to be discouraged. They say, no, we are going to vote despite the odds. Uh, and it doesn't mean that we accept that it's okay for the playing field to be tilted, but what we do want is a constitutional change of government and a citizen's victory for change. This is the last mile, the final stretch, and so we call upon all hands to be on deck as we win Zimbabwe for change. Without further ado, I'm going to defer proceedings to our elections directorate, who are going to share with us some of the touch points that they have, and then we'll field a few uh, questions from the press and then call it a day. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Fazi. Uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Basically, I'm, gonna, I'm going to talk about uh, just um, two issues which uh, uh, Fazi spoke about. The first issue is with regards uh, to the ballot paper. 
the fact that uh, uh, there's uh, the, vote, the postal voting has commenced means that the ballot paper is out. Of concern to us as the C is that uh, contrary to Section 52A of our, of our Electoral Act, we as the stakeholders, particularly political parties contesting in this election, we are supposed to have been informed with respect to the, to the ballot paper as to who is, who is responsible for printing it, the quantities, that information is shrouded in secrecy. We so now we get to hear that uh, the ballot paper is out there and uh, it's a cause uh, for concern as uh, the stakeholders. More so, if you can recall some of you in the previous elections or even in the last by-election of uh, March 2022, the candidates were given the opportunity to go and inspect the, uh, the ballot paper. But this time around, nothing of that sort was made. The only sample of the ballot paper we have is the one in circulating in the social, in social media. And that is a cause for concern. We can't be updated <coughs> via social media, we as the political parties, because we feel we are very uh, key stakeholders in this electoral process. Looking at uh, uh, the social media reports and the picture of the ballot that we saw, it's a cause for concern. That is, if that is the actual ballot paper that we are going to uh, use on election day. The burden of proof now lies with Zach to give the stakeholders the opportunity to inspect the ballot paper. The ballot paper itself, the, the design, the law is clear when it comes to that. The design, the ballot paper should be designed and the names arranged in a single file in alphabetical order. But the ballot paper which is in circulation, it's in two columns. Clearly a way of, uh, you know, igniting the profile of Mr. Nangabo. In the, the reason why I'm saying that, remember we have 11 presidential candidates. The first column goes up to number five. Then the second column from number six up to number 11, and Zed decides to put Nangakwa at the top, which is clearly illegal. If you can recall, even in 2018, we had a similar concern with the 23, 23 uh, candidates that participated in the election. We said, well, the law was breached, or probably Zeg was, you know, was overwhelmed by the numbers of our presidential candidates, which were 23 then. But this time around, we only have 11. But Zeg goes on to repeat the same two columns. So clearly, it, we know why that is being done clearly is to profile Mr. Mangabo, and we are worried, as the triple C, in terms of the breach of the law. And uh, going on to the issue of postal voting, we only had an announcement from Zach with respect to the numbers of people that applied for postal voting and those that uh, qualified for postal voting. The number which we got from Zach was 17,633. Those, those that succeeded and that will, uh, will duly accorded the status of postal uh, voting. Of concern with that kind of information is that it's not specific. We do not know, for example, how many people applied for postal voting in Harare, in Bulawayo, Mashonal and Central. When we speak of the verifiability of and transparency of the election, which are the key tenets of any electoral process, and even if you go to our, ele to our constitution, it's, there's clarity on that one. But with the postal voting, there's an element of, of opaqueness there, which is quite worrisome. Not just us as the, as the triple C or the people of Zimbabwe, but the affected persons being the, in this case, the security details, the diplomats that have been accorded that opportunity. Be that as it may, Section 75 of our Electoral Act is very clear in terms of uh, the, uh, the voting uh, procedure for the postal uh, voting uh, candidates. 
and the aspect of uh, secrecy of the of the vote, which is also emphasized in Section 59, 57 of our Electoral Act. But the amount of distress calls that we got is from yesterday, and even up to now, we are still receiving those distress calls. And they are not just confined in one particular region, they are spread throughout the country. And clearly, what, whatever is happening there is the same which is happening throughout the country. An indication that there is a command out there to say this is how uh, postal voting is supposed to be conducted. Just as to dramatize what, uh, what we've been told and also what, was, what has been witnessed by some of our members of parliament that we assigned to go and observe this process. And in particular, our members uh, uh, of parliament uh, for responsible for uh, Bizo and uh, Kwekwe, they rushed to Kwekwe Central where the, where the process was taking place. We have a situation whereby security details are asked to vote you know, in according to their sections. If you are in law and order, you go and group there. And in the other section, it goes and group there. CID is another grouping. They are given their ballot papers. And there's a, the senior persons, being the commanders, being the superintendents, they will be seated there. Once you have voted, like what was happening quickly, you cast your X. Before you seal, you know, that ballot paper, inside the envelope. You are supposed to show your superior that you voted uh, for ZAN PF, which was clearly, that was the case in Quaker Central uh, Police Station. And we have no doubt that it's been happening throughout the country because these distress calls that we're getting, they actually confirm what was uh, observed by our colleagues in Quaker. So that in itself brings into scrutiny the credibility of the postal votes. And we've uh, just written to Zek on that matter. And we are waiting to hear uh, their, uh, their, their response. The secrecy of the vote is very crucial. That's where the gist of any election is. And clearly, as a country, we are faced by uh, a regime which does not want people to express their free choices. We can't actually isolate the postal voting incident with what is happening throughout the country. We have cases documented which we are going to bring about, which we are going to highlight in our dossier, where we have even village heads writing down names of people and even indicating to say, you'll be number one, you'll be number two, you'll be number three. So that those people can go and claim and falsely declare illiteracy or physical challenges so that they'll be accorded uh, the voting assistance uh, uh, privileges. And that is a cause for concern. We highlighted these issues during our by elections uh, last year in 2022, but clearly they are recurring. But well, the citizens of Zimbabwe, they know what they want. No amount of intimidation can stop them from choosing the leaders of choice. And we, are, we continue as the triple C, encouraging people <coughs> to stand up against all these uh, lies and myths and uh, intimidation. It's so bad that uh, some of you could have seen videos that are in circulation to say that uh, we are able to, to know, you know, in terms of the serial numbers and the ballot uh, papers as to who would have uh, cast that the vote on that particular uh, ballot paper, which is a lie. And there's a, there's a lot of myths and lies out there. So this is the other responsibility of our uh, commission, Zach, to dispel those lies. Because the, the, the law is very clear with regards to all these issues. The issue of misinformation comes into play here. And you, members of the media, you also have a responsibility. And of course, of concern, lastly, with regards to uh, media play, we had a workshop uh, with the media last week, and there should be a, a media monitoring committee chaired by ZEC, which is supposed to govern 
you know, the conduct of uh, media houses, journalists, and other media players. That is still not in place. So now we have issues around misinformation. Who is going to monitor that? Who is going to ensure that, you know, there is a true record or a true reflection of what uh, our law says with respect to elections? So, but however, that will not stop us as the C. We People know what they want and we continue using all the democratic channels, all, all our members, all the citizens out there, you know, to spread the truth about this election. I thank you. Thank you very much uh, to uh, both Mr. Makoni and uh, Ms. Ilan Shiliadenga. Uh, we will now just field maybe two or three questions uh, before we close this press. We know that uh, the media has to go somewhere else. So. Okay, my name is Jeffrey Moyo. Uh, I've got a quick question. You are, precisely, you are appalled by the label of the stress calls that you are receiving. It, it, it casts a dark shadow on your level of confidence about the outcome of the, the elections. How sure are you about your victory? <coughs> well, I mean, obviously, Mr. Shiliading is going to come in. But we say it doesn't cast a dark cloud. Those distress calls mean that the security forces and now the citizens within that complement are standing ready to defend the vote. They were the first ones to raise the alarm. They were the first ones to say, no, 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 we know our constitutional rights. We've been educated about our, about our, about our right to vote in secret, about our right to make a democratic choice. So if anything, it shows us that this time round, the citizens are more mobilized than ever uh, to win Zimbabwe for change. They want uh, change and transformation. That's why they were, uh, you know, not keen to vote Zanu PF before their their superiors. So, if anything, it gives us confidence that even as we go towards the 23rd uh, of August, citizens are more energized than ever and are defiant despite the odds. Despite the odds is the key term. We're not saying that there are no odds. We're not saying that the playing field is free and fair. But we have to ensure, like I said, that this uh, vote is too big to rig and that we win by a large margin to ensure that uh, we, we attain power and ensure that there's a democratic transition in this country. I don't know if you'd like to add anything else. Okay, great. Next question, please. If there is one. If not, we can... Well, one last question. Let me... Okay. Jeffrey, I'll come back to you, don't worry. <coughs> yes, sir. Oh, thank you. I'm going to wash it. So how are you going to access in this week the bank paper prior and election day? I mean, that, that's a question that really should be asked to Zek. The obligation is upon them constitutionally to inform us. Obviously, we are taking legal advice, uh, especially if there's been a breach, as appears to be the case. We have placed them in Mora by going both to PGHQ today and going to Zek offices to ensure uh, that they comply with that. And if they refuse, we have to uh, take all measures uh, available to us, legal, political, diplomatic, uh, in terms of the law. The set of guidelines on elections are very clear about what should be done there. And they have an obligation to comply with their own laws more than anything else. What are they trying to hide? Uh, they're trying to hide that they've put Mr. Mlanda at the top where he shouldn't be. Uh, we will deal with that. And we, you'll obviously be updated in due course as to what happens there. Next Cluster <laughs> Kutichiele kuchuru yiko, kutichipika up my members, edu tichiva tora. Takazu wana mapurisa uya, nezi rorira avu vaku sunga vanu. Paka sunga vanu 40, ezi nezi vaturi kumapurisa vaka batwa. Asisus chunuti shamisa ndeche kutizwa nezwa, zanu pia viru unganiza vanu. Basina kana mvumo unengu wava kumapurisa, iwa abateze, zunengu shaka nyoro wane mtemu pa mopa. Asifamungo tenderu wa kutipa kampenu. Isus tikangu itakaru, kakaru, rali kedu, 
ati kangu kolekta ban ba mapurisa kangu ona ba honga na ban ba kafika yelo niangu juu pa mti unongo ona utiban ba tosungwa nichi kare juu 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 no chora tiza visa nuke fili kuchika ino chika kuti triple C ine ban ba kawanda ba nui support ndo saka ba chizu na kuita se kuti sunga ba nui ba chizu susu ba kati sunga kuchata za kampen asisi chuno ti aiwa chuno kumbira kana uti chuno demanda kutwa hata cha kwa mwezi chini ba waka sunga na ba ba sunungurwe. Nyaya chuo takia ndi sa kumatari nyaya chuo takia ndi sa jakari kumabzeva inya isinga tenderwe tamte musakati nora mbele kuchaiwa anwele unga wa sununguru zanu pf muriku chikei ane kuma election tu ona nukunda gata ite inya kushani sa mapurisa kutwa shunguru zevan ndo saka ba nubachizu wati aiwa zanu pf ati chaida iko kwa kumbunyi kiza ba nukuma mani kiza kuita wa jaba singari Right, I'm gonna take two more ma'am and then Okay. In your presentation, you highlighted that you received quite a number of calls. I just want to find out in terms of numbers. I mean, we've got an incident tracker, and the dossier is going to. But I think the the key thing is the sample. We got distress calls from almost every single province and every single unit. Morris Depot, there were distress calls. Tomlinson Depot, CIDHQ, Chikurubi, um, Chipinge. Well, almost every single unit where postal voting will take place or is scheduled uh, to take place, there were distress calls. Um, we don't obviously have the, the number, the exact number, but the, the key thing is almost every single unit, Yanganima police, Yanganima armed forces, and actually many kids were good water. All of them were saying the same thing. But Iowa, you said, so that many kids were good water. Can I see? Do not go vote them when they are voting, but quite a lot of people want to put a tally, so they couldn't get out in the voting app. That's obviously unconstitutional and something that obviously has to be taken up, and we are doing so, we've placed them in Mora, and we're going to take legal steps uh, if, if they don't heed our call. Okay, according to your presentation, it seems uh, the Zimbabwe courts are not on your side. Uh, what are you going to do, given that the fact that you win after under 23, what are you going to do to defend your fault? Well, I mean, um, I, I would frame it differently. We don't say the courts are not on our side, but what we know is that ZANU-PF tries by all means to abuse all state institutions, not just the courts, the police, everything, to try and manipulate them uh, to, to try and rig against us. But what you've seen is that the most important institution, after all, are the citizens. We all saw what happened when they tried to ban 12 of our MP candidates in Bulawayo. The citizens stood firm and said, no, you can't do that. You can't disenfranchise an entire province. Even now, uh, when they try and arrest our members and institute lawfare, we're saying no. None of these state institutions have the prerogative to choose the leader. It's citizens that have the right to choose their leader. And what's supreme over all state institutions, over all political parties, is the Constitution. And the Constitution says one person, one vote. Universal adult suffrage. And in an election that's free, fair, credible, verifiable, and transparent. So it's that constitutional imperative, that standard, that's what's supreme. And that's what we're holding Zanu PF to. And even if uh, you look at our record in the by-elections, the reason that we continue to mobilize citizens in the way that we do against the odds is not an acceptance of the tilted uh, political and uh, you know, voting environment that we find ourselves in, but it's to say, no, citizens, despite all these odds, despite all these dirty tricks that are being attempted uh, by Zanu PF, we're going to win Zimbabwe for change. And the key task is to ensure that it's too big for them to rig. Okay, I think with that, we are going to call it a day. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, we'll, we'll let you know when the next uh, update will be. Thank you.